Greetings everyone, welcome to video number 42 in a project management series presented by Process Geekoid. Today's agenda will be going over reviewing the PMBOK process table as well as the 39th process which is the control risk process. This process occurs at the intersection of the risk knowledge area and the monitoring controlling process group. As always, please subscribe, like and comment. So let's move forward. After risk planning, the next step as project managers is we need to proactively control risk as much as possible to make sure the project will be completed on time, under budget, and meeting customer expectations or voice of the customer. The process of control risk is the process of implementing the risk response plans, tracking identified risks, monitoring residual risks, identifying new risks, and evaluating risk process effectiveness throughout the project. The key benefit of this process is it improves efficiency of the risk approach throughout the project lifecycle to continuously optimize risk responses. In other words, we are monitoring controlling process group to approach identified risks from planning process group and implementing steps to control the risks, whether it be a threat or a opportunity. This slide recaps the risk management journey. We are at the point where we have already planned for, identified, qualitatively assessed, quantitatively assessed, and planned for risk responses. Now we are at the phase of controlling risks. Next we'll be going over the inputs, tools, techniques, and outputs, ITTOs, for plan for control risk and right here we have got project management plan as an input then we have the risk register which is an output from identify risk process then we have work performance data raw observations such as deliverable status schedule progress costs incurred remember WPD is a raw observation that is always going to be an input to any controlling process and will yield a work performance information which is data analyzed in context. That is a hallmark for all controlling processes for the exception of monitoring control project work and perform integrated change control. Next we have next input is work performance report which is coming from monitoring control project work process which takes into consideration the status reports for any new or existing risks that need to be controlled. For tools, we have risk assessments. This is where we are going to reassess current risks and close risks by approaching the risk and make impact project. If the risk did not impact the project, then we update the documents and determine if there is a still a danger of the risk occurring. So risk audits examine and document the effectiveness of the risk response. This is uh, similar to the quality audits that we have done in Perform Quality Assurance, which we'll do in the next set of videos. Uh, basically, audit is where you get a third party to audit the process of how we are responding to risk and how effective we are in doing that. Variance and trend analysis is where we're looking at earned value management formulas and may be used for monitoring overall project risks. Then you have technical performance measurements, which compares technical accomplishments during project execution to the schedule or technical achievement. Then you have reserve analysis, which compares the amount of contingency reserves. Remember, remember contingency reserves are where you have money set aside for known risks that you have accepted and remaining to the amount of risk remaining at any time in the project in order to determine if the remaining reserves are adequate. So you're always going to be monitoring to see if you have enough money set aside for known risks and also management reserves to make sure you have money set aside for unknown unknown or unknown risks. Then you have meetings where risk management team will meet to review the risk control activities. This can be also led by the BCM or Business Continuity Management Team. Outputs from this process then are Work Performance Information or WPI. As other controlling processes, the hallmark data flow is Work Performance Data comes in and is analyzed in context to provide information relevant to the project. 
This WPI is then sent to monitor and control project work to create a work performance report. We also expect change requests as we are controlling risk because we might have to put in recommended corrective actions, recommended preventative actions as we are analyzing our risks and controlling for them. Then we have project management plan updates, project document updates, updates specific to outcomes of risk reassessments, also updates due to risk audits and pre periodic risk reviews. Then updates also come in the form of actual outcomes of the project's risks and of the risk responses, which are part of the risk register and therefore project documents are being updated since the risk register is one of your project documents. Recall that a project document is anything that is not a baseline or a project management plan subsidiary plan. Then we have the other output, which is organizational process assets updates. These could be templates for the risk management plan, including the probability and impact matrix and risk register, updates to the risk breakdown structure, and lessons learned from the project risk management activities that have been carried out so far or from previous projects. So the piece that we need to go over here after doing control risk, we will have to keep in mind that regardless of how effective we think our risk response has been, there is always going to be a chance of having residual risk and secondary risk that will continue throughout the project life cycle and have to consider this to make sure that none of these risks end up becoming major threats throughout the project. So residual risks are basically, uh, the key word here is residue leftovers, the amount of risk that remains after a risk response from the risk response plan has been implemented. So sometimes a risk is still inherent in the project even though we have a plan in place. That's why it's called a, a residual risk. So in the example, uh, we could have a medical hospital and in a in that scenario, we could have a residual risk that remains after attempting to cure someone. So this could be in the form of a nosocomial or hospital acquired risk or illness. So that is an example of a residual risk. Secondary risks are basically risks that are coming in the form of after implementing a risk response. So this could be side effects from a medical treatment. So those are risks that come after a risk response plan has been implemented or initiated to a risk happening or occurring. Those are the two outcomes that we can get. Hopefully we will limit residual and secondary risks as we respond to risks throughout the project. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, and comment.